kids and today I'm here again with my daughter Lily. We are still, you know, at home because uh, everybody is hunkering down. So if you're looking for something fun to do, I'm so glad that you joined us today to make an art project. And today, uh, what are we making, Lily? Well, we are making the chalk pastel night landscape inspired by Peter Alexander. And this is an example that one of my students made. Looks a little like this. And this is an example of a printout of the art that we're inspired by. So what are we going to, uh, there you go. <laughs> okay, what are we gonna need for our supplies today? Well, our supplies that we need for today are some black construction paper, some masking tape, a pencil, and a pack of chalk pastels. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. If you don't have these exact supplies, you can still do it. Um, what you'll need is any size of chalk pastels. You don't have to have this many. You can have like an eight pack and it'll still work. You, you uh, just need the simple rainbow color. Yeah, you do need a dark piece of paper. So if you have one of those construction paper packets, use it. If you don't, whatever's the darkest color of colored paper you have. But black works the best. You can do um, a rectangle or you can do a square. And if you have the tan masking tape, you can use that. But this masking tape right here, the blue kind, is a little less sticky and it's easier to get off your paper when you're done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to use the tape. So gather up your supplies, sit down. You okay, Lily? Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna teach you how to do this. So what you'll be doing is you'll take the tape, you'll pull out a long piece, and you'll start at the corner and you'll line up the edge of the tape with the edge of the paper. Rub it down, lift up the paper, and then just hold on to the corner and rip away at the tape. So I do all four sides like this. Oh, and also- You can cut it with scissors too, but you don't want to wrap it around because then it's really hard to get off when you, after you've worked on your project. So I just like tear it off. And also, if you have a rectangle uh, construction paper, but you want to do it on a square, what also can you do? You can cut it to size? Oh yeah, you can cut it any size you want. This project doesn't matter what size it is. But, but it looks it really clean in the end if you have a taped off edge. And that's how you get the four sides taped and the edge of the tape matches the edge of the paper. So um, Lily's gonna be doing a square and we already taped hers to make it quicker for you guys. And I'm gonna be doing a rectangle, but what I think I'll do today is, I'll do mine standing up so that you can see this one at a different angle than her at the table. So what are we doing next? Okay, so step one, well first let me tell you about what we're gonna do. So uh, Peter on, and Plush might still be getting some, um, uh, we're still getting that. Okay, and we're, you, might, uh, you might have heard of this artist. His name is Peter Alexander. He's still living and making art. He lives in Los Angeles and the uh, landscape, cityscapes, nightscapes, you can call them either of those. W what he made is of Los Angeles. So this is Los Angeles at night and you can tell it's a city where all the lights are in a grid because they're like streets in a grid, blocks, and they're all, this, the streets look wider at the bottom and look narrower at the top. And why is that, Lily? That's because of one point perspective. Yeah, so we're gonna teach you one point perspective and we're also gonna show you how to use chalk and how to blend it, make some cool skies. Yes. And we're gonna divide our painting, or painting, our drawing paper into two sections, the sky and the land. So where the two meet, it's the horizon line. Now, you can have half of your picture, the top half of the sky and the bottom part land, or as in this example, you can have only, oh my gosh, this is maybe only a sixth of it is sky. I'm gonna make half mine sky and I'll tell you why. Because I really like doing the sky. The sky you can do really fun things with. You can do whatever you want. It's your drawing. We're not going to judge you on that. So. Okay. You can do one of two things. You can take some tape and um, I'll show it on mine. How, or, do you want to have the tape on yours? Uh, Sure. Okay, I'm going to give Lily one piece of tape. She's going to put it 
across the center and or make her where, horizon line. Or wherever I want my horizon line. If I want it higher than the center, if I want it lower than the center, wherever I want my horizon line. So you're gonna put yours right there? Okay. If you don't have tape, all you have to do is take your pencil and draw a line. Let me take a look at that. I drew that upside down. Uh, that's okay. I'm gonna have it a little straighter. So, okay, and then I can erase Wait, it Wait, but also when you use the tape, aren't you uh, just like drawing a line to open maybe straighter? Yeah, that's the beauty of the tape. If you use the tape, you get a really straight line. Yeah, so okay. I'll draw my line. Oh, you don't have to draw it too. Well, if you want to, because the chat will still do it. Okay, so now we're gonna take the top half of our drawing and we're gonna do sky. You can do any kind of sky you want. And uh, this one here is like purple and white and yellow. This one is black and with a touch of blue. And I don't know what color sky you're gonna do, but I'm gonna pick a dark color. I'm gonna pick dark blue. So I'm going into my pastels like I'll this. I'll do a dark purple. I'm gonna draw my horizon line right here. The okay, now skies are really abstract. That means, you know, they're not the same way and they're just a bunch of shapes in the sky, like clouds or smears, whatever you want to call it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a chalk sideways. Let me see if I can get this any closer to you. And I'm just gonna go like this. I don't want to build up tons of chalk because then I'm going to have tons of chalk dust and it's going to be just a big mess. But I'm going to start out with a dark sky and I'm going to smear it all the way to the edges. Oh, and also with your chalk dust, you do not want to blow it. You want to tap it on your surface that you're working on so you don't get it in other people's eyes. So you get your first color just like that. Tap, 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 get all the chalk down on the tablecloth. And then, you're gonna pick another color to blend into it. So I'm gonna pick this kind of a turquoise blue. And I'm only gonna put this towards the bottom edge. So are you gonna choose like a lighter color? No, I'm just gonna scribble it around here like this. Yeah, I'm gonna add some clouds and stuff. Wait, are you using a lighter color? Yes, this is my darkest color was the first color. The dark then you're gonna add a lighter color. Now you're color. adding a lighter color. Okay. So I'll do like a blue. And once you pick that color, you're just gonna take your finger and kind of fade it. Just to like rub it against the the end the bottom part of your sky. Yeah, like that. You know, it's just really light. If you over rub it, sometimes you're gonna lose the brightness. And you don't wanna lose the brightness and vibrance of the chalk pastels. Some people always ask, oh, why do you use black paper a lot? Because I feel like the chalk pastels pop out more on top of the black background than they do on the white paper. So I teach a lot on the black paper. It's looking good, Lily. Okay, now I would pick Maybe one more color that you're just gonna add a little to, and then after that we'll add a little white for some clouds. So I'm gonna pick, oh my gosh, something bright. I'm gonna pick, ooh, I'm gonna pick this pink. This really hot pink. You pick any color out of your box that you want. And I'm just gonna smear it really lightly some of that on there. Okay, dust it on there. And then I'm gonna take my finger and smear it a little more. Remember, try not to rub it out. Wait, how many colors are we doing on this? This is my third color. So are we gonna do like four colors? The fourth is gonna be white, yeah. So go ahead and, um, yeah, oh, what? what's that shape? I don't know. That's crazy, girl. You wanna rub that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why I like. Or that could be an airplane that's making like loops in the sky. Yeah, try to use your chalk sideways. Just like, like lay it sideways. And blend that in really quick. Alrighty. Now you're gonna take some white 
His white for me, his white for you. Thank you. Now you want your white really light. Oh. Okay, you want your, because it's a night sky. The clouds aren't bright during the night. No. You know, there might but be- that, just, that white's kind of pretty bright. <laughs> yeah, so watch what I do. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna draw designs with it. I'm just gonna rub my chalk in different areas, even going off. And then maybe I'll have a brighter spot, maybe in a few spaces. Mine goes, mine looks like that. Mine makes like lines okay. like that. Okay, yeah, try not to get a pattern going. You want it to look natural. No, but I, I like wrapped okay. it and Yours it is like lines. a windy whooshy. I, now yours, I wrapped it in Okay, so bl like blend it in. Mine, I'm gonna blend it in a little. Because remember, it's nighttime. And then if you want to look like there's some stars, you can take, if you can find the corner of your chalk, you know what, Lily? If you can find the corner of that white that you just had, you can do this. Just twist it a little and leave the teeny, the tiniest dots, like star dust. And do about like 10 of those. They're just dots. No, I'm, doing, I'm still doing oh. my own. Okay, we're making it a good. little brighter in areas. Now, that is so quick. That's how we got the sky done. But remember, this is the easiest part was the sky. And next, we're going to learn the one point perspective so that we can draw the roads. So what Lily's going to do next is she's going to re slowly remove the masking tape. That was That's fine. Just tap it. Tap, tap it. Okay, you're good. You're good. Okay. Next, let's set this now in here. Now I'm gonna remove. Okay, make sure they can see in the camera. My. She's gonna slowly remove her tape. Now I kind of do it at an angle so it doesn't rip. Yeah. Good thinking. Slow and go. You can regroup the tape down there now if you want. Are you just going for it? Okay. So look at how. Look. Oh, let me hold it up to. Um, look at how. Look at how clean that edge is. That horizon line. So that's the beauty of using tape. But remember, if you don't have tape, it still works. And then let's just take this Wait, and set it aside. Like, oh. I put it on like some of my. Okay. Spots I got. Great. <laughs> Okay, so now what we're gonna do, remember, we don't blow the chalk dust, do we, Lily? No. And you know why we don't is because sometimes it'll go up and it could go into your nostrils and make you sneeze, or it could go up and get into your eyes, and we don't want anybody rubbing their eyes. And it could go into other people's eyes. Yeah, totally. Okay, so now we need the pencil. So in a one point perspective, there's gonna be this one point and we call it our vanishing point. That's where everything goes back into that space. We're gonna have ours on our horizon line. Yes, so, and so, in the middle of our horizon yeah. line. Well, yeah, you don't have to have it in the middle, but it's easiest when it, if it's your first time doing one point perspective. So make a little dot with your pencil. Actually, since you're pretty far away, I'm gonna make the dot right here with a piece of white chalk so you can see it. I'm gonna do my little pencil. From from that white dot, you're gonna go straight down with your pencil mark. So what we're doing right now is we are making the guidelines. These are gonna be the lines that are gonna show us where we're gonna, you know, color in. And our, it's okay uh, if your horizon line is not exactly in the center. Um, yeah. You're fine. Okay. It's okay if it's not. So exactly. from that point, you're gonna make a straight line and go down, but a little farther out to the right of the last one, like this. You know what, I'll, I think I'll draw these in yellow for you at home so that you can see this better than my pencil mark. But you at home, use your pencil, okay? Okay, so that was the first line. This is the second line. Yeah, that was the second line. And then you're gonna go, you're gonna make like a fan 
And every time you go down, you're gonna go out you farther. You get farther, farther apart. And farther and farther until you, but every time you're right near that dot. Don't push hard. If you're using your pencil, you don't wanna push hard, I'll tell you why. Because you actually dent your paper. And if you do, then the chalk will leave a different coloration there. So you wanna draw really light getting those guidelines. And that's your tip of the day. Okay, now, not every street in Los Angeles is maybe spaced one block apart. Some might be two blocks apart. So on the other side, let's mix it up a little. You always start at that vanishing point. This time I'm gonna go that far out instead of as close as the other one. And then I'm gonna do it again. Maybe I'm gonna go there and not even have it go to the corner. And then I'm gonna go here and right over here. Looks good. So those are our vanishing point lines, but then there are the lines that show you how far away it is. So when you take a photo with your camera, have you ever noticed that the closer the object is in the photo, the bigger it appears? So we know the mountains are bigger than people, but in the background behind the person you took the picture of, it looks like it's smaller than the person. So that's perspective, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create an illusion where things at the bottom of the, of the page are seem like they're bigger. And then as they go farther back, they appear smaller. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna take our pencil and you're gonna make a horizontal line that's side to side, matching the, the edge of the paper. And you're gonna make a line straight across. So and it's okay if it's not exactly straight. Yeah, not all streets are straight. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do mine in yellow so that you can see it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, but the next time I go back, it has to be closer than the space between that line and the tape. So the, between that line and the tape right now is two fingers of my space. So I have to have it smaller than two fingers. Of my space. Yeah, look, I have dirty fingers. So if I go like that and make two spaces, and I got two more, it has to be lower than that. So I'm gonna go inside a finger, and I'm gonna go, oh, the next one's about there. That's three spaces. Oh, okay. Three fingers. Go ahead. Maybe you had three fingers on the first one, then two, then one, then smaller, smaller, smaller. I don't know. Okay, remember, we're not drawing dark because these are guidelines. And we don't want to dent our black paper. You're gonna go all the way up? Okay, so now, <laughs> or what? yeah, now when you, the next time you go up, you're gonna go a One little. One finger. Yeah, or just a slightly. A or little, a finger and a half. Just a little closer, okay? And then the next one, it gets a little closer. Wow, ah, I gotta look at this. And then it gets a little closer. That one got kind of crazy. And then it gets closer and closer. And, t and now they're gonna fade away because the farther away things are, the less in focus they are as well. So they're gonna get tighter Like and tighter. Like in a camera, if you see like a specific photo, yeah. where like a person is very bright and then behind them it's all blurry. Yeah, that's, that's the awesome. farther away they are, the more out of focus it gets, usually. There's little filters and tricks you can do to change that up, but generally, that's what it is. So. We got Jet again behind the camera, our little director, Lily's twin brother. Uh -huh. It's a family affair. Uh -huh. Okay, so next Dad. we've got all Dad. these things. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add, like here, we're going to add these clusters of glowing areas. So those are the bright yellow areas. Those now, are all the lights on yeah. from all the houses and everything. So since I'm gonna do yeah. yellow, I can just take my finger and I can like just make this stuff out. kind of glow, rub it out. So okay, I'm but you don't have to do that. To, yeah. Let me demonstrate on I'm yours. I'm gonna. There's a bright yellow. Yeah. So since Lily did hers in pencil, she's <coughs> gonna do what I did. What she's gonna do is she's gonna decide what part of these grids 
She wants to have a foggy, glowy area. And then what I want to be like a brighter area. Yeah. And remember, the farther back you go, the skinnier your glow yeah. is. And also, um, so those are on you those. can oh, over can the foggy glows. areas. You can have some bright, glowing areas over the foggy. Yeah, but you don't want like we did it. Yet. But you don't want foggy areas on every single line. No. You can have a foggy area here. Skip a little bit. To do some over here. Yeah. Go foggy here, foggy here, and maybe you know you only do part of that one foggy. But all your foggy areas are kind of near a line. So go ahead and add all those foggy areas. For me, I drew this specifically so you could see it from far away. So I have a lot of yellow lines, but I'm gonna adjust that at the end by adding some black over some of them. Okay, so I'm doing that. doing this, let's talk about Peter Alexander. So he's about uh, 80 years old and he lives in Los Angeles and he was most, uh, his most popular work was um, what was resin uh, sculptures. They were just geometric forms. They were like, they look like a block of colored glass. And those were his most, uh, he was most well known for those. But then he did a lot of images of Los Angeles in this style. And um, he originally went to school to be an architect. But then he got into painting and sculpting. Yes, and also Peter Alexander is actually one of our friends. We actually uh, know him. Yes. And because, how do we know him? Uh, well, he's a, we originally knew him because he is a friend of our friend Dave Hickey. And also because he lives in Santa Monica, and we go to, to the beach there and rent a house every summer, a little beach house that all, it used to be someone's art studio and it actually is his. So it's a super cool place and we, uh, so we got to know him through that and he's super nice. And he probably doesn't know that we're doing this pencil. So we'll have to give him a call. <laughs> Alrighty. So we get these going. Now I always tell you, I don't want to have this many glowy spots because of the batch. I did that so you could see my lines from far away. So I'm gonna go back in with some black and I'm gonna blacken in some of my spots. Too, if you've ever gone to Los Angeles, which is inside the Disney Music Hall. The Walt Disney Music the Hall. Hall, which is in downtown Los Angeles, near all the museums and stuff there. We love learning about artists and what they've done. And uh, hopefully you like to go to museums too and learn about artists. Okay, so I added a little more black to mine only because I had so many yellow areas. But Lily, yours looks amazing. Okay, turn yours around. So I hope you've skipped some areas and you didn't put yellow glow on everything. Okay, once you do that, then you're gonna get yellow again, okay? And now you're gonna have your bright places. Those were the foggies. Now like you're gonna- is here. Some little scribbles. Some, but they gotta be near those uh, perspective lines you did that went to the vanishing point. So remember, things are brighter. They and gotta be on top of your, uh, or your near lines. your um, foggy lines. Yeah, so you'll see your old guidelines that you had from a pencil. That's where you want your little dots to go. And if you really take a good your look at them. little scribbles. Basically, the boldest lights that you see from overhead, maybe he was looking from a mountain, um, you know, or a hill, and he could have been looking from the Hollywood Hill for all we know. Um, and you, you are seeing the street lights. So the street lights, you know, they're lined up on the row, on the sidewalk. 
So that's why they're so organized. But maybe one street has a lot of street lights and one doesn't. So now you're adding the really bright yellow. Now, every dot doesn't have to be the same size. You don't want it to look like beads on, on, on a yeah, chain or on a But floor. once you get further and you want the lights, the to little dots tighter. to get smaller. And once the closer ones, the ones near the very bottom of your paper, you want them to be bigger, like down here. Yeah, so the ones near the vanishing point, they're tiny. But the, as they get farther out, like out to here, they're bigger. And they're just little circles. I think I'm getting a lot. Let me see how you result again. Yeah, and you want them, you know, you did, like I said, you don't want them to look like beads on a chain. You want them to be a little off. Not so exact. And they could even be like little scribbles in a line that make. So you can have circles or you could have little scribbles. Or you can have both. Yeah, that's true. So this is how mine's looking a little bit close. I'll zoom it into you. I can't wait to see how this turn out. Now, if you took uh, some of the areas and you um, you know don't have any of that dark black paper showing anymore, or you might not have black paper and you used dark blue or dark purple or something, then go ahead and add some black to it so that you have some really dark spots. So I'm gonna add some more black to mine, but remember it has to be in that grid. And this will take a while. Oh, I don't know. What do you think? This like, might take a while. It's look good. All right, let me see how yours looks, Lil. Looking good. I can tell that it's overhead view of a city. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to do your cross ones and not just yeah. your diagonals. And then we're just gonna add one more finishing touch. And this is a rather quick drawing. Mm -hmm. So the last step is that we're gonna take white Again, we've used white once on the top, but we're going to use it again. And we're going to make really tiny dots, you know, within those yellow areas. And these might be brighter lights. So you'll just add a few little dot lights to each section. Look good, Lil. I think you're ready for your white dots. Just a few. You know what this reminds me of? What? It reminds me of when you first are driving back from California in a car and uh, when you first see Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. You know, when, you, when it's dark and desert the whole time and all you see is darkness. But you kind of see a glow over the edge of the mountain, so you know Las Vegas is coming up. And then all of a sudden you get past the mountains and uh, you see a city of lights. lights. And you can see them, you know, in a grid. Or you can see this from any neighborhood that's up at a higher altitude, like um, Summerlin. Yeah, like Summerlin towards the like Red Rock area or um, in Green Valley, this area called Anthem. You can see also see the streets from far away with all the lights. And also, in, in this project, it's okay if it gets a, if like you smudge the bottom of your paper a little, because it's supposed to look messy and it's supposed to look kind of smudged, right? Yep. 
Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and add your whites. What? Okay, and I'll take your yellow and put it back. And while you're finishing that, Lily, and make sure you peek at our camera, I'm gonna grab tomorrow's project so they can see what that's gonna be. Okay. Okay, I hope you guys have been enjoying our live stream classes. So we'll, we are doing this every day at four o'clock and um, we know what all the projects are for the rest of the week. So if you ever wonder what they are and want to know what the supplies are, go to our website, which is artclassesforkids.com. Or you can watch our video that we made on Friday. Um, oh yeah, Lily made it alone. And I told you, all of the supplies that you need and all of the projects for this week. Yeah, and Lily did it all by herself because I had some foot surgery, which now looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I am healing and everything's getting better. And um, we, so we, we, told, we showed everybody the examples then of the whole week. This week, if you want to look them up, you can look them up there. Each day we post what our project of the day is on our Instagram um, page, or Instagram, what do you call it, on our Instagram? Yeah. On our gram, as they say. No. And if you if you want, it would be so awesome if you followed us on yes. Instagram. And also you can see it on our website at artclassesforkids.com. Yeah, and while you're there, are you almost done? Yeah, I just need a couple more well, down here. Knows. Because I'm going to show them how to take tape off, too. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's just like how I... To take the tape off, it's just like how I did to take my tape off for the horizon line. Yeah, so, so now what, what I would like to see all of you do when you get pretty close to being finished is find a color that you like and put your initials in the corner. This is a pretty busy um, piece of artwork on the bottom, so you don't want to write your whole name. So just either yeah. write your initials or make a little scribble and say that represents your name. I'm gonna put the K and the B here, right there. Wow, Lily, it's looking good. Alrighty, hold yours up. Yep. Let's see how, how these look. So far they're looking like this. So what we're gonna do now is carefully peel the tape off. Yes. And when you do, here's uh, a tip. First, wipe your hands out. Whatever, I'm wiping them off on this because we're gonna wash this. But wipe them off on if you have an apron on or you have a paper towel. And then, when you're peeling off the tape, make sure that you keep this area that we concealed under the tape, keep that black. So don't Try grab it. Try to keep it clean. Yes. Yeah. So just grab the corner as you peel the tape. And angle it. Don't forget angle it. Angle. Yeah, that's bad. I angle it. Okay. So I'm gonna do the other side, just like this. I'm gonna peel it, just like this. Yeah. And got two sides off. Gonna do this one right over here. Ooh, uh, some of my it. black paper is coming off a lot. Oh, really? Ooh, peel away. Different brands of paper are different. You know, sometimes they peel really good and sometimes... They peel really bad. Well, they're sensitive. Okay. Yeah. Whoa, there's mine. So now, you can see what it looks like once we take that uh, tape off the edges and it has like this really clean border. Here, let me help you a little bit, Lily. I got it. You got it? Okay. Here, I'll hold this. Oh. Here. Go like that. Oh, I got it, though. No. Okay, so let me help, though, because we... Okay. Alright. Mine was really sensitive, so yeah, sorry that's about right. paper came up. So give it let him see how it turned out. Whoa. Ta-da! 
Ta-da! So this is a really, I think this is a pretty easy project. So I bet all ages have done this project. And uh, this is kind of how it turns out. So show us, send us a picture of how yours turned out because I want to see what color skies that people chose to do. You know, don't you want to see? I want to see who did a yeah. rectangle, who did a square. I just want to see it all. Yours looks like kind of like a galaxy. Mine looks like a galaxy? Mine's windy. Well, this looks like a windy. galaxy yeah. sky. So, do you want to know what we're doing tomorrow? <coughs> Let me show you. Tomorrow, we're going to be sculpting. We're going to sculpt with stuff that you hopefully yes. have around the house. We're, we're going to do a recyclable sculpture. A recycling sculpture. Going green. So, Going green. tomorrow we're making these, Save which are really popular at our art camp. Yes. Which are these. And these are water bottle flowers. And they're inspired by the artist named, do you remember? Takashi. No. No, Dale Chihuly. He's a glass blowing artist, and you might have seen his glass flowers on the ceiling in the entry of the Bellagio Hotel. Yes. So these are our, are inspired by those flowers, and we give you a lot of options. You're gonna need eight bottles. So save up the water bottles around there and cut off the labels, or you can do that while you watch us and we're gonna smash them up. Alrighty, we've got other projects in store for you too. Yes. We've got lots of ideas, and maybe even next week oh, we'll start doing our. And also, the supplies that you'll need for that oh, oh. truly flower are watercolors, paints, nope. a. Let me tell. Oh, not a watercolor. Water acrylic, bottles. Water sorry. bottles. Acrylic uh, paints. Acrylic paints. Packing tape. Packing tape. Scissors. scissors That's it. And, and a paper towel to wipe yeah. your hands with. So we are so happy that you joined us. And if you need any supplies, like if you didn't have chalk pastels, but you use something else and you want to get them, or you know, oil pastels, watercolors, some Sharpies, we, we're trying to keep it really basic. I know yes. at our art camp we have all kinds of fancy supplies, but while you're at home, we're keeping it simple. But if you need any supplies, and if you go to our website, which is artclassesforkids.com, and you order through our supply list, which has links to Amazon.com, then a portion of 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 that. Uh, Wait. You know, also, don't we have that in the, the link? To the yes, but I'm just gonna tell them too. Anyway, a portion of that will go towards um, us putting on these free videos to you. So we want to keep them free. So if you want to help support that, and you buy, if you're gonna buy art supplies from Amazon, go to our our page and buy them from it, and rather than just directly from Amazon. Also, we have Kofi. Uh, connected, so if that's, you ever want to do a little And that's tip, linked to, to the yeah. description. So. And what else do we want to tell Lily to do it? Subscribe? To subscribe, to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can um, so you can hear about more of our live art streams. Uh, our uh, live streams. <laughs> yeah, so a lesson a day, and you got to keep making cool art. art.